everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making curry in the Instant Pot. If you guys want to know how to make this, please hit that subscribe button and watch me cook. Now obviously I've never done this before in the Instant Pot, so I wanted to see how this was going to work if I just threw basically everything inside of the Instant Pot with doing minimal amount of work and just seeing how it turns out. So you guys are coming along for the ride in this. Now I did start off peeling two small potatoes. These are on the smaller side in my bag of potatoes that I got. Um, I don't know, I just picked the smaller ones because you just add so many vegetables in there. This is basically what I would have done inside of any other stovetop saucepan, I guess. So I'm just going with this. And to give you guys a little extra tip, if you don't want the extra starch in your potatoes, all you have to do once you're done peeling them, once you've cut them into your little chunks, throw them in some water and let them soak for about 15-20 minutes or so and you'll see some of the starch coming out of the potatoes. This will prevent the extra sludge, I guess, in the bottom of your Instant Pot, which you guys will see later. I'm going to show it to you so you'll know exactly what it is that I'm talking about. But of course with me not wanting to do any of that and just wanting to throw everything inside of the pot all at once just to see what happens, I'm going to skip that part. And I'm going to show you guys how I dice up everything and get everything ready like I normally would have inside, again, the stovetop saucepan. Oh, and if you guys notice, I did use a napkin right on top of the cutting board just so I can peel it right on top and then throw that into the trash can just to make it easy for myself. I did rinse my potatoes off and then I am cutting them lengthwise, as you see, in half. And then I'm going to cut it again in half. The same thing on the other side and then I'm just going to cut these into thirds just because these potatoes again are on the smaller side. That and also because I have kids. I don't know about you guys, but ever since I had kids, I can't cut things into like large chunks anymore. Everything has to be like bite sized just for them, just so you know, choking hazards or just so it's not large enough where they're gonna make a huge mess so they can fit it into their little tiny mouths. Is it just me? Are you guys like this too? I don't know, it's just me? Okay. Moving right along, we're going to be done with these potatoes, cutting them into thirds. I'm just going to push these aside and then grab yourself either one small onion or this is part of a very large onion that I'm using. Uh, again, I'm just going to chop these up right into thirds. Big chunks is all you need for the onions. I mean, these pretty much disintegrate right into your pot, so just go with it. Now, according to the directions on my curry packet, it says basically you would add oil, so why not? I just threw it in there <laughs> and I'm going to throw my vegetables all right inside the pot. And then you're going to see here, I am going to add chicken breast. It's about a pound of chicken breast. Just follow the instructions on your package. But these are frozen rock solid. This is what I wanted to do. I didn't want to do anything else. I just want to throw everything in there so that, I mean, you're going to see. But again, following the instructions, I did go ahead and add the amount of water they recommended. And I am using a cup of just frozen vegetables that I normally would have with my curry. This is just the medium spice level. They come into little bars like this and I just break them up. And I'm just going to throw them right into the pot. No rhyme or reason. Again, just throwing them all in there, trying to find out what's going to happen with this one. Now all we need to do is just Seriously, what I'm doing here, throwing everything to the pot and just closing it with my lid. Make sure you put everything over onto the sealed side. What am I doing walking around here? Oh, okay, here we go. Turn your knob to the seal side and then I'm just going to pressure cook this. I started at 15 minutes just to see what would happen. So pressure cook it at 15 minutes and then let that go. Once it's done, make sure you put it on the vent side. Carefully open your lid. And let's take a look inside. See that little blob there? That's a melted curry block right there. So what I've decided to do is just kind of stir everything around because of the melted curry blocks that needed to really be mixed around, I guess, to thicken up our water to make our sauce. And this isn't ideally how it would normally look, but we're just going to go with this for now. Now I've gone to grab a pair of scissors here so I can cut my chicken. You could take it all out, throw it onto a cutting board and cut it up with a knife if you'd like, but again, less dishes for me and it's just anything that's going to make things easier. So I just grabbed a pair of tongs and I started cutting these into bite-sized pieces. 
And if you can tell, this one is a smaller chicken breast of the two. It wasn't as thick. So this one actually was cooked through all the way. So again, I am just cutting these into bite-sized pieces and it's working out well so far. Scissors just make everything easier, don't they? If you drop it like I do, make sure when you cut it, you're not cutting the bottom of your pan as well, just to make sure you preserve it, I guess. This one is a larger one. You can see how much thicker it is than the other chicken piece. So I am cutting it into, I mean, you can see I can't just cut right through the whole entire thing because it's so large. But I am continuing to cut through here. And then you can see, you can start to see right there, it's raw. I'll show you guys uh, the raw piece again once I cut through a little bit more so you guys can see exactly how raw it is in the middle. So it's definitely not ready to eat. There we go. See how pink that is? We don't want that for sure. So I'm just going to continue cutting this into bite-sized pieces and I'm going to throw it all right back into the pot and then we're just going to start all over and cook again. Well, not start all over. It just needs to cook a little bit longer. So again, I am cutting these into small pieces to bite-sized pieces to what we can eat and then you guys will see what happens again. Now that everything is cut up, I'm just going to stir it. We'll give it all a good stir one more time to make sure I have all those melted curry blocks as well thoroughly incorporated into the pan. And then we'll repeat everything all over again. Put your lid on, turn it on to seal. We're going to high pressure cook this. I actually changed my mind. I was going up to five minutes and then I realized, you know what, most of it's cooked and they're in smaller pieces. I don't need to cook it that long. So I changed it to three minutes. So we're done here, it's gone back to venting. I'm gonna pop it open carefully, putting the steam away from the camera. And now this kinda looks more like what we normally do on top of the stove top. See it's how nice and bubbly here. And you can see I'm having a little bit more of a tougher time, I guess, mixing the bottom of it because of the starch that causes that little bit of sludge, which I will show you right here. Or I will show you after I'm done stirring. Oh, there it is. <laughs> There is a sticky part of the sledge of the starch. So just so you know, it wasn't hard to wash out at all, so it's no big deal. But all we need to do is just serve this over rice or noodles, and this is the outcome of it. We really love the texture of the chicken coming out of the Instant Pot. So if you guys like this recipe, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell, and until the next meal, thank you for watching Watch Me Cook.